them both out of his side. But Wright and Jackson are free, as this mentioned. They're back up front. Now let's hear Billy McNeil's thoughts on the team formation. Yes, Alec Miller will be trying to compensate for the loss of uh, Graham Mitchell by switching uh, Miller over to the left-hand side to compensate uh, for the ability of Cahoon. He'll also be looking for Jackson and Wright to profit from wide runs by McAllister and O'Neill, and he's given a lot of responsibility to young Danny Lennon, playing him in the heart of uh, what I think will be a real hotbed this afternoon. So the Hearts line up, just two changes there from the team, which lost 2-0 to Hearts eight days ago. Gary Locke and Wayne Foster are out. John Cahoon is free of suspension, he's back in the side. And John Miller comes into the midfield. Let's see how this team may line up. Much more settled formation from Hearts. Uh, Craig Levine will be sweeping at the back behind Barry and McLaren, who will be detailed undoubtedly to pick up Hart's front two. They'll be looking for the, those front three of Cahoon, Johnson and Robertson to drop set Hibbs at the back and perhaps cre create another shot. So it looks as though it may be 4-4-2 against 3-4-3, but one key man in the heart of midfield for Hibbs will be Danny Lennon, just 24 years old. It's only his third start of the season after a very difficult period with a knee ligament injury and he has made a very big impact on his return to top team duty. For Mo Johnston, the chance again for Scottish Cup success. He was in the Celtic winning side of 1985 in a forward line with Red Robin, Mick Stay, Johnston, Burns and McGarvey. How Celtic would welcome that sort of forward line today. The referee, Les Mothram from Wilson Town, who is a candidate for the World Cup Finals in the USA in the summer. So some discussions going on there, Craig Levine sorting out who should be having a kick-off. It will be Hearts who start the match playing down the famous Easter Road slope. Uh, Hibs will be happy about that because they like to play downhill in the second half. So we're underway with Hearts trying to get the ball forward early. Johnston going up there and looking very quickly around the team formations. Alec Miller clearly has tried to disrupt things as little as possible. And indeed, Willie Miller has started at right back. And the left back position is being occupied here by David Farrell with Bowman and Tweed in central defence. Yes, that's right. I've noticed that immediately. And obviously, Alec Miller is trying to disturb his team as little as possible after Graham, with Graham Mitchell being out. And Farrell has been given the responsibility of looking after Cahoon, which will be a big responsibility this afternoon, I would think. Well, there's Dave Beaumont's header in central defence, winning number three. A bit of jostling there in the middle of the field. John Miller is penalised. These are always tense opening minutes in the match. Nerves jangling throughout the players' ranks. We need the settling in period. And of course, if either could strike an early blow, it could get in the heart of that Hibbs defence. Growing in maturity this season. Here he is in possession. Becoming more and more assured with the ball at his feet also. Looking there for the front men. Kevin McAllister has gone roving. He's gone straight through into a forward position early in the match. Here's Michael O'Neill, halted by McKinley. That's for Johnston. He's inside David Farrell, supported by Cahoon. And Cahoon now hustled by two players. He still gets the cross in. Here comes McKinley. Fine play by McKinley. And the opening goal for Hearts is scored by John Robertson. Two and a half minutes on the clock. And the hammer of Hibbs does it again. A brilliant finish here by John Robertson. It's his ninth goal of the season. It's a lovely piece of skill by Tosh McKinley there. Look at that. There's John Robertson in position to do what he does well. And really hot. Hibbs should know about his ability to score, he's done it so often against him, but it's all, a lot of it's down to John Cahoon here. Puts in a nice ball at the back post, in comes Tosh McKinley, gets to that byline, there it is in net. What a wonderful start for Hearts. Well, what a face of that is for Hibbs, so early in the match, already concerned, no doubt, about the jinx factor of playing. Hearts, 20 times they've played in the last five years without success against the city rivals. And now they have the worst possible start to contend with. And I reckon that Alec Miller in the dugout may well be concerned about the fact that Graham Mitchell was missing because that goal created an area which Graham Mitchell would normally have dominated. David Farrell, in fairness to him, was trying to adjust his position for that. 
you know, it's a, it's a marvellous goal. It's a lovely piece of skill by Josh McKinley. And John Robertson, deadly inside that box, isn't he? So, a free kick now for Hibbs, taken by McAllister. Headed down by Tweed, and no one coming in on the edge of the six-yard box for that. He makes his way back to his defensive role, as Henry Smith waits for the area to clear. 38 next month, playing in his 42nd Edinburgh derby. William Miller getting up there with Johnston. A throw to Hearts. Gary Mackay has had to become right back for Hearts. Let's tweet again. Trying to knock that beyond the Hearts defence. McKinley. There's Cahun. Into space for Johnston. And Jim Layton thought twice about that. Well, I reckon the Scotland goalkeeper was fortunate there. He started to come, change his mind, then came. Made it in time. Johnston finding good position, though, an attack for Hearts. Morris Johnston is creating a, a further problem for Hibbs at the back because he's he's breaking into the inside right position. And he's, his mark has not come with him at times, and it, it creates a situation that uh, David Farrell's almost forced into marking two players. So Johnston showing his... Remarkable ability again, maybe not quite as sharp as he was at his peak, but still very dangerous forward. Stephen Tweed's header conceding that corner for Hearts. And yet post ball, it's Johnston is there. Up goes Levine. Clearance from Jackson, not very decisive, but the free kick goes to Hibbs. Bit of bumping and barging inside the area. Alan McLaren, the player penalised, he's being spoken to by the referee. I didn't think there was a lot in it in actual fact, although there, uh, big Stephen Tweed comes up, does what a centre-half should do, gets himself up and gets the ball out the area. I think that's going to be important to him at the minute because they've got to try and set themselves down, try and organise themselves as positive as they can at the back and make sure they don't lose another goal. Well, that was quick there, ahead of Hamilton. Better back by Beaumont. That's McLaren. Again, Hart's keen to get the ball on his right flank for Cahoon. O'Neill. This is Beaumont. Tweed makes himself available square. Closed down by Johnston. Ball still in play there for Willie Miller. Bring it up the line for Wright. Well, the problem has been when Wright has done some good work in the air. Hibs player have not been able to be in the end of the passes. Breaking down there. Johnston losing out there to Farrell. Here's Keith Wright. Now Jackson. This is O'Neill. Kevin McAllister on the left. O'Neill going all the way himself. Well, he has nothing but positive thoughts in his mind, Michael O'Neill. He saw the gap there to go forward. Try. And he always fouled by Miller. O'Neill complaining that the advantage rule might well have been applied there. What is a striker for Newcastle United before a transfer to Dundee United by £350,000? Then a £245,000 transfer to Hibs last summer. Here he is again. Delicate ball played, and there's a one. Keith Wright! from Michael O'Neill, what a terrific header from Keith Wright. That's exactly what he loves doing, and look at this ball, it's a real quality ball, in behind the defenders, eliminating the central defenders, maybe we've got loose marking, but good header, good good finish. Well, a great finish there by Keith Wright, who scored in the league match for Hibs at Tyne Castle recently. A very similar header it was, which is 13th goal of the season. Hibbs' biggest signing, 500,000 points from Dundee. Justifying that once again. Here's John Cahoon now. 
making for the byline. Well claimed by Leighton. Well, the goal could scarcely have come at a better time for Hibbs. Michael O'Neill so much involved in the last 10 minutes or so, playing in that delightful chip. The marking certainly wasn't good enough from the Hearts' point of view, but Keith Wright took full advantage. And it's a major boost to Hibbs before the interval. Well, these matches sometimes criticised for not providing too many goals. Alec Miller with four instructions there for his players. But a cup tie since the war. The fewest goals in any Edinburgh derby has been three. It has been a, a 4 3 win for Hibs in 1958. 5 0 to Hearts in 55. So goals are plenty in the cup, if not in the league. But Jackson and McLaren tangle as McAllister goes through. Top the post and scrambled away by Levine. Hibbs couldn't have come closer. While the referee's attention was drawn to a clash between Jackson and McLaren, there was Kevin McAllister. It's off the post. Now Keith Wright was waiting. Tim Levine almost scored himself. Yeah, it's astonishing the way the game has changed because parts at the back look a shambles just after that goal and almost lost the lead, almost lost the, the early goal that they lost there, they scored there. It's amazing how much they have been upset at this, but uh, you know, that's, this is an interesting scenario because Dan Jackson might find himself in real difficult trouble here, but it's a yellow card for both of them, and I don't think either can complain about it. Well... A nasty little clash there, picked up by the referee, but while that was going on, Hibbs almost took the lead. Their supporters have come to life below us here, sensing the prospect of victory. Goes Tweed, well beaten by Levine. An acrobatic clearance by Johnston. He's involved again, bounce speed in. This is McAllister, now operating on the right. Keith Wright helps it on, it's Craig Levine again to the rescue for Hearts. Now O'Neill. And Hibbs have stepped up a gear here, looking for a lead before half time. They have another corner kick. We've had 45 minutes in the first half. We're into stoppage time now. And Hibbs are trying to take full advantage. Here's O'Neill's corner. Stephen Tweed challenging. But Levine did extremely well against him. This is McAllister. Has to be careful about offside. O'Neill is all right. Well, that's good play by O'Neill. Swept away well by Miller. He could so easily have made a mistake there and come back towards his own goal. Let's go home. It's hectic action now. Down goes Barry Lennon. The tackle by Miller. Attention required for Lennon. Certainly justified that there is additional time added on in the first half. This game has certainly exploded into life there and Oh, John Miller makes a, a reckless lunge here and when you consider what players have been booked for already he may consider himself just a little bit fortunate there but certainly the last four or five minutes Hibs have created more than they, they, they had done up to then Hearts had looked so comfortable that early goal had put them commandingly in front and all of a sudden the game has turned on its head and, and Hibs looked the most likely side Well Keith Wright has provided equaliser which has given so much hope to the legions of Hibs fans here. So it's Michael O'Neill over this free kick. With a minute and a half of additional time. Headed on there by Berry. Cross goes Stephen Tweed. Tackled by McLaren. Then by McKinley. There's Lennon again. And another clash. It's Danny Lennon who's gone down. John Robertson, the culprit. Oh, the referee giving the free kick to Hearts, it would appear. And he's not happy about Stuart Collie's arrival on the field to look after Lennon again. Yeah. I can't believe the, the referee's decision there because Danny Lennon's in control of the ball, knocks it past John Robinson. John Robinson, I don't think, tried to, to foul him, but couldn't go out of his way and certainly was obstructing him but uh, the referee for some unknown reason has gone the opposite way with his, with his decision well Billy one goal apiece how do you think the balance of play is now for the second half to come well um, 
Hearts were so comfortable after that early goal. Hibbs had hardly posed a threat. But all of a sudden, Michael O'Neill exploded into the action. He's been the, he's been the motivator be to, behind most of the attacks that, that Hibbs have mounted in the, this last five or ten minutes or so. And I think, considering the chances they have created, they can deservedly say that uh, the scoreline doesn't flatter them. So, last three minutes of stoppage time in the first half. A late opportunity in the first half for Hearts. That's Willie Miller's clearance. Darren Jackson back in defence, lashing the ball clear. And that's the last action of a hectic first half. It's Boston's. And Hibbs playing the favourite way. The floodlights have come on as the gloom descends. And Darren Jackson there, number 10, with Keith Wright, the front two, ready to start the second half. So the tenants, Scottish Cup fourth round tie, the Edinburgh Derby goes into the second half and Hibbs undoubtedly with renewed hope in the light of that good finish the first half Hearts will be anxious to settle quickly get back to the pattern of play which was so successful for them for so long in the first half just Kevin McAllister battling back well on the left opening the second half in the same position as he occupied for the bulk of the first half wide in the left an area where Hibbs won Hearts won been that way since the 42nd minute of the match. There is clearance. Hamilton to Miller. Well, that's good play by Miller. Now Lennon. Nimble play also. Back here with Beaumont. Not the kind of service Kevin McAllister likes. Especially against Jim Weir, who's such a good central defender. Here's Foster. Using his pace. A chance to win the game for Hearts. He's done it! It's Wayne Foster's first goal of the season, and it surely won the tie for Hearts. Right out of the blue, sheer joy for these Hearts supporters. As Sandy Clark on now, four minutes left, he says, concentration required, and Wayne Foster is being booked for going to the Hearts supporters. But what a good finish this was. Well, this is exactly why Sandy brought him on. His pace is always a threat at the back, but his composure's good there as well, because he takes his time, he knows exactly where Jim Leighton is. Here we see the initial pass, which splits the Hearts defence, uh, the Hibs defence, just for about the first time this half, and there he is, he takes it well, steadies himself and places it past Jim Leighton. Crucial time to score a goal. Well, now, uh, can Hibs come back? Wayne Foster, what a time to score his first goal of the season. He looks all set to win this Edinburgh derby, the cup tie. A quarter-final place beckoning, and Foster has turned out to be the super sub. The noise you hear now coming from hard supporters. Let's tweet on to O'Neill, and the referee has given a free kick for offside against Hearts. And Hibbs will be certainly very concerned that one simple ball through the middle should have opened them up like that. Perhaps a lapse in concentration. But they may well have to suffer dearly for it. And the irony also is the fact that the goal for Hearts comes at a stage when Hibbs have been doing so well. Warwick Miller checking his watch, realising that time is running out rapidly. Michael O'Neill's header, led away by Craig Levine. So David Farrell with the throw, it's back to Beaumont. A header by Mackay. Well won by Hamilton, there's Evans. McKinley's clearance. David Farrell climbing there to win that, and Jim Weir thumps that ball into the enclosure. Well, now the Hibs supporters are totally stunned. It looks like game number 21 without a win against their deadly rivals. Well, that tells the story, that picture of the Hibs supporters. A second half which Hibs have largely dominated 
But the result of all that is they've got a goal behind. Can they save the game? Here's Kevin McAllister. Queuing up in the middle, and still at 1-1 kindly. Michael O'Neill couldn't get on the end of that. Stephen Tweed and Keith Wright were challenging for the initial ball. This is a good ball into the middle here, but there we see the real scramble for the ball, and I think Stephen Tweed should have got a better connection there, I think, because he had the opportunity to put it between the posts here. Just doesn't quite get up, doesn't jump his height, doesn't direct his header. We're into stoppage time now, the end of the game. It looks as though Hearts are through the quarter-final. Unless we're in for a remarkable finish. They won't, that's it! The referee ends the match! Wayne Foster goes to the Hearts supporters again. Having been booked already, that would be foolish. Greeted by John Thune. The Hearts supporters celebrate. The jinx for Hips continues. They just can't seem to find a way to beat Hearts in these derby matches. And having dominated the second half, Wayne Foster pops up with a deadly finish four minutes from the end. And Hearts are in the quarterfinals. Well, Gary Mackay, a hero here for Hearts also. Billy, your heart must go out, surely, to Alec Miller. Well, that's right. Uh, I think he obviously worked very hard at half-time. He, his team got the break of that goal just before half-time. He worked hard at, at half-time, got his team organised, got them playing the way he wanted to play, and then he sees, it, he sees the tie disappear in the last couple of minutes. That little lack of concentration at a crucial time, you've always got to watch your defenders, keep them on their toes, Wayne Foster's pace. You've got to say to Sandy Clark, great substitution, Sandy, you took a chance, it was a brave decision, but it came for you. 